Um, Commissioner Roby? I'm here. Commissioner Gillespie? Here. Commissioner Overton? Here. Commissioner Matina? Here. Commissioner Mills? Here. Commissioner Farrington? Here. Uh, I do not see President Commissioner Comstock. Um, alternate Commissioner Smith? Here. And Alternate Commissioner Lyons? Here. I have um, one vacant seat and um, Alternate Commissioner Sabatier is not present. Approval of the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? There. Any discussion? If no one has any uh, additions or corrections, I move approval of the minutes. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public comment. This is time for the public to address the commission on anything not on the agenda. Would anyone like to speak? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda, review and authorize payment of expenses for March and April 2016. <coughs> Any questions on that? <laughs> If there are, if there's no discussion, I want to approve of the consent agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Move in. Mm -hmm. uh, public hearings. The first public hearing regarding the sphere of influence update for the Lake County Watershed Protection District. John? All right, I guess we don't, we're not on the microphone, so I'll try to speak loud. What I have done was prepare a sphere of influence report, and it's given this, <coughs> this particular uh, sphere um, a lot of thought. The, um, uh, you have two maps. You have a watersheds map uh, showing the watersheds and the relationship to, to Lake County, and you have a proposed sphere map. And let me get to the logic of this. You remember we did a service review, and we, we did very various things with respect to the service review, but this um, this report, and I received some general direction from the, your commission uh, about uh, four or five months ago on this one. And uh, what I started to do is look at it logistically and see, okay, if we were to have a sphere of influence that included the watersheds, in the entire watersheds, getting back to this map, which I didn't go forever on these watersheds, but you know they go over the county, we would be adopting a conflicting sphere for the flood control districts in adjacent counties, which we can't do. So that's not going to happen unless these spheres in Napa, not Yolo, Glen, Napa, Glen, Mendocino, Sonoma, uh, if we were to, uh, we would have to have all those spheres amended because overlapping spheres are a no-no. So that was, a, that was an issue I had, even though this, the watersheds overlap the boundaries. Now having a sphere of influence less than the county boundary, where uh, the charter for the flood control district and later on with the Senate bill that was passed, called for a county-wide um, district boundary and provided specific services that were, have always been provided by the district on a county-wide basis. Granted, some of it is for the Clear Lake Basin, but others provide services in Middletown or, or other places uh, in the county. Therefore, having a, a sphere of influence less than the county boundary didn't appear acceptable because these services are currently being provided. And I saw no reason to, to change the sphere from that of not of being something different than the county boundary. This is exactly what you guys had mentioned um, four months ago, whatever it was. Now, as far as management of the district, the district management is currently the public works, under, underneath the public works department, underneath the board of supervisors. Well, I don't, LAFCO doesn't make changes in management without some full-blown study. And what we would, what would need to happen in order to change this is, 
the county board of supervisors would have to say, okay, we're going to try to do, we're going to do an efficiency study here and see if something would justify having a separate <coughs> entity for this uh, agency. Right now, I don't have the facts or the numbers to justify anything except that if the board wants to divest itself of the watershed protection district, then it would need to go through a process. And um, I don't think either way, or depending, would affect or would not affect the district boundaries. It depends. I don't, I don't know. So my conclusion with the sphere is that the sphere be adopted um, countywide, which is the status quo sphere. Um, as what was the kind of the general consensus that I received. And, um, and the reason is, unless we want to apply for applications to amend spheres and district boundaries in four other counties, I just can't see us having a sphere larger. Could be an area of concern, perhaps. But, and you're already concerned about the watersheds, or at least it should be, in these other counties. So, anyway. Would you have the power to create spheres in the other counties without going to those counties? You think you're the principal county? Well, but we would be overlapping the spheres of influence for these other districts. I don't right. think we want to do that. Right. I think well, the better way is to collaborate with the other four. You can, you but, can. You, but it's not you generally have a good policy. It just seems like we're creating a lot of problems. And we all want to be on a first name basis to the adjacent <laughs> counties. That's what I say, we're creating a lot of problems. Uh, right. So anyway, that's kind of the, uh, the conundrum here, is that really the management structure is um, the Public Works Department reporting to the Board of Directors, uh, our Board of Supervisors acting as the Board of Directors of the, the district. And that's really all I can say on the subject. Any questions before we open the public hearing? Go ahead and open the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Betsy, come forward. Anybody else want to speak on this? Betsy Kahn for the record. Um, yes, I find the level of conversation about the requirements for the district to be really pretty superficial. Um, looking at the, where the line is doesn't discuss what the actual service needs are. And once again, uh, the, the, um, the discussion that we had over a couple of years period had to do with what are the actual services needed from the district. We would get that the Water Resources Department does this and it's public works and it has all these regulations and ordinances. That's all fine, you know, but we're not actually identifying the services that need to be provided within the concentration of domesticated incorporated and unincorporated areas. So that whole thing about not being able to talk to another county or whatever it is, that's, you know, that's silly too. We have lots and lots of tri-county, multi-county relationships, the water management plan is with four counties, you know. This is, this is a, a red herring in my opinion. Um, and so I just want to say, uh, you know, I did review the document in detail and on page four, of, of your report, it says, uh, under the uh, topic of sphere boundaries, that um, with respect to factor C, well, there was no factor A and B included, so I didn't know what those were, but LAFCO will not include areas in an agency's sphere of influence which cannot feasibly be served by the agency within a time frame consistent with the sphere plan. So, number one, feasibility, actual services, we have, what is watershed stewardship? Nothing. And um, we don't serve the federal uh, lands more than 51% of our territory. Anyway, uh, we do need services in the cities and the um, shoreline areas, the headwaters for uh, watershed uh, resource management, vegetation management, fire prevention, <coughs> all of those things. And those things are perfectly within the sphere of, of activity, the scope of work of the Public Works Department, County of Lake, all those agencies. But the district itself doesn't provide those services. And there is no sphere plan that I can see when you say a sphere plan. You know, the, this is your own language in here referred to this. And, um, uh, and then I, I compared the two 
options that you uh, offer, both of them are identical, virtually identical. So again, I would really appeal to you, I, think I see some pretty decent findings, recommendations for things that the district should do. None of the district's activities are truly accountable to their own budget, their own plan, their own programs. It's all absorbed into the um, water resources and, and those kinds of things. I understood a long time ago why that happened. When the state came in here and said, you need to implement this uh, water quality order, and the county and the two cities got together and they had to come up with a stormwater management plan, and everybody went, wow, there's no funding for this. I work with counties all over the state of California in the same dilemma. There's no funding for it. So we have to figure out how to put it in there, insert it in our workloads, make it as low uh, profile as possible. That, unfortunately, is in counterintuitive to your need, first of all, to engage the community, the public, the, the taxpayers, the decision makers, the, the various departments that provide those services. They're not engaged except for this sort of tacit dimension that we do stormwater management. That's barely what we do. We do municipal good housekeeping. We do illegal uh, discharge detection and elimination through the environmental health department, police departments, and so forth. But we don't do public education and outreach. We don't do public involvement and participation. And we are not taking advantage. This is my most biggest concern. We're not taking advantage of these enormous environmental programs that are available to us that would create jobs, would restore watersheds, would prevent flooding, that would lead to the lack of uh, the reduction of uh, contamination in the lake. All of those are, are things that we all need, but we just we just keep saying, oh no, it's all fine. Just that's the boundary line. Don't worry about it. Thank you. <coughs> well, I'd like to respond to what Betsy said. Okay. We're here today, and what's on our agenda is a review of the sphere of influence of the Watershed Protection District. We're not doing a service review. Mm. We're not doing a watershed plan. A sphere of influence as defined in the LAFCO Act is, I quote, um, the probable physical boundaries and service area of a local agency. In other words, we're looking at the existing boundaries of the sphere of influence and determining whether they need to be changed, either expanded or contracted. The current boundaries are the county boundaries. Now, the way I look at the world, the county boundaries are wrong. The county boundaries should be the watershed boundaries. Amen. But that's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so I have to kind of deal with the current reality, even though I don't like it. So um, as much as I appreciate everything Betsy was saying, that's not really what we're here to determine today. Yes. I have a lot of comment on that. Yes. What, what Ted said is exactly right. Like I'll cite an example. <coughs> it's not my county. Mm. It's in English. You're talking with your hand in front of your face. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, in, in South Lake County, Saline Creek is uh, provides a lot of water to some South Lake County residents, and the waters of it are in Napa County. And if we had our way, that would be in Lincoln, but it isn't. So we have to deal with the reality where the county boundary is. You and I have dealt with that at great length. But the realities are, it is what it is. And we can't change that. Mr. Bajan, why are we here? What? Suzanne, did you have something? Yeah, I did. Because one of the things that we keep talking about that we keep forgetting that we're talking about is service area. And we did do a municipal service review. That's where this came from. So we did spend two years looking at the services that are provided and when you look at this map and you go okay there's a watershed that doesn't even come to us that's part of our watershed protection district according to the rules i read in here for lafco if you're not planning to do any services within your five-year scope 
in an area that it shouldn't be part of your sphere of influence. So I, I understand not wanting to make it bigger. I don't think anybody needed an explanation for that. But I don't understand not making it smaller to say the service area is the area where you're going to plan to provide services. And I don't see that up in that Eel River watershed part where, what are we planning to do up there? There are, what it said that the, uh, the agency, the services that it provides were in here and they had to do with flood control and, um, and cleanups and <clears throat> kind of fire protection and a lot of things that this agency actually does as a scope of work, but we're not gonna do them in those areas, so why should it be part, according to LAFCO, what I read that LAFCO does, why should it be a part of this area at this time? John, did you want to respond to that? Well, the Watershed Protection District, Flood Control District, does flood control and flood plain management, stormwater management, groundwater management, they do the NPDES permit, water quality protection, water supply management, watershed stewardship. And this was supposed to be on a countywide basis, and it's been on a countywide basis. So I don't understand why we need to reduce the sphere of influence. In fact, a lot of the flood control, uh, there, there used to be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a long time when Hank Porter was here, they had a telemetry system that included all of these outlying areas and that's how they used to help manage flood control down below. I mean, it's all integrated. And uh, so, you know, if you want to reduce the sphere, that's fine. My recommendation is that we remain the county, the same as the county, because that's what they do, the flood control district or the watershed district. And if we have problems, we've got a bunch of a series of recommendations in here that the flood control or watershed protection district should follow. And the venue for that is the board of directors for the district, not LACDA. And uh, we can revisit this sphere at any time, but uh, and which I'm sure we'll do that. But we need to, uh, we, you know, at some point, we're not managing the watershed protection district. If that were our job, we would, the, this whole thing would be perhaps different. So, anyway, that's kind of my two cents. Yeah. Uh, Stacy, the, the response of Betsy and Suzanne's concerns, uh, one of the things that's on the table right now, in fact, we have a meeting this afternoon on our marijuana, medical marijuana uh, ad hoc committee, and we're broaching a discussion for not only the registration fees that are accrued with an implementation and revision to Article 72 of our order, but looking at taxation of uh, cultivation of cannabis. And you've got to be big picture to understand the importance. One of the things you touched upon, or you might not have touched upon, is water quality and watershed restoration as part of the charge of uh, the Watershed Protection District. Um, there is an opportunity right now if our board supports Visions and recommendation of our ad hoc committee to actually allocate uh, monies uh, to the watershed protection district for abatement efforts, cleanup efforts, uh, water quality improvements, and restoration efforts in the upper watersheds, which clearly would go within the scope, in essence, of coterminous of the county boundaries and the sphere of influence. So, to actually say that we don't have an opportunity to exercise and do services and restoration of our watershed and improve water quality and protect the, uh, our environment and narrow that scope down is not feasible in understanding what's really going on, for example, i.e. in cannabis cultivation. So I don't know why we would reduce the scope if there's a potential to get funding to allocate the monies to this entity and allow us to do those cleanup and abatement activities and restore the upper watersheds. So maybe you guys can respond to that. There's no plan. Okay, well. And, and, and this is what I, just, I, I have to say, Mr. Government. Director, please let me answer. Um, I've worked on many, many municipal service uh, reviews. Uh, every time we have been required to look at the service plan for a district that provides health and safety uh, functions and that sort of thing, um, the district may indeed, and I've certainly worked for years with uh, 
with uh, watershed, water uh, resources, and planning department. I talked to Rick years ago about using the stormwater ordinance to prevent the eradicate, you know, to eradicate these um, illegal grows in the watershed and that sort of thing. It's never been done, but we have that ordinance in place. So I'm all in favor of that, but there is no plan. That's all I'm saying. That's great. I mean, bring it on. But this has been how many years since that district was created, and there really isn't a plan for the district's services. And this I'd like to see that. Review. I'm sorry? No, that's it's not a, a plan. Or is this a plan? That's a review. There's no plan. There's no annual budget that reflects the programs and describes their, their <coughs> tasks and identifies the priorities and, and de delivers RFPs so that people can bid on those publicly instead of having them done by public works. All those things, there's no plan. I'd love to see that, please. Yeah. Well, I don't know if what's before us is a plan or not. I think it's just this fear of Why not? No, no, I'm talking about you're talking yeah, well, about using the district to, to take care of marijuana well, I'm talking issues. about the necessity to keep the boundaries as expansive as possible. That's yeah, we what got that part. Yeah. We already got that part. Hopefully that's One of our recommendations is that they prepare, the district prepares, prepares a strategic plan and also to do implementation ordinances. Yeah. Those are in the, those are in the recommendations. And, and so what we do a sphere of influence, part of it is the boundary of, of the sphere, and then the other part of it is these, uh, these recommendations. And then when we go around and do the next round, mm -hmm. we check and see if they comply. That's okay. nothing. Oh, yeah. Five years. Okay. It doesn't Thank have you. to be five years. Well, be good. But well, <laughs> I just want to see some teeth in actually making something happen as opposed to but, just uh, writing. I would advise if this, anybody has a problem with the district's operations that they need to talk to the board of directors. Oh, please. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, but I, that's the way it works. Yeah, don't come to LAFCO. We're not the enforcement agency. I understand. And that's clear. Okay, so we'll focus on the boundaries. If we shrink the boundaries and then there were tax monies available to help all those areas, now they're not in the boundary, we can't use the money there, right? You're not putting it. You don't unnecessarily restrict the ability of the agency to provide services. <laughs> okay, anyone else from the public? Go ahead and close the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Commissioners, for any further discussion. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. I move approval of the sphere of influence for the Lake County Watershed Protection District. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? I'm sorry, who was the second? I was. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, our next public hearing regarding the 2016-17 Lasco final budget. John. Thank you. At the um, pre previous hearing we had, we, we made one amendment, and that was the changes to the uh, uh, conference because the commission was desired to send two people. And uh, the uh, recommendation in the report it echoes the uh, recommendation for the uh, proposed budget that we had um, approved two months ago. Okay. Any questions before we open the
So previous resolution, um, we can do a roll call vote. Okay, you want to back up this down? Yeah. I think it would be an easy fix at this point. Yeah. Okay, so let's back you back up to our sphere of influence update for the watershed protection district. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. We'll call vote, please. Okay. Commissioner Hills? Aye. Commissioner Barrington? Aye. Commissioner Gillespie? Aye. Commissioner Gillespie? Aye. Commissioner Rovi? Aye. And Commissioner Overton? Aye. Thank you. Okay, and then our next motion was uh, to adopt the resolution approving the budget. The budget resolution. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Mills? Aye. Commissioner Barry? Aye. Commissioner Gillespie? Aye. Commissioner Comstock? Aye. Commissioner Latina? Aye. Commissioner Roby? Aye. And Commissioner Overton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Other business, review Lake Lafco's records retention policy adopted on November 20th, 2013. I just wanted you to take one more look at this uh, records retention policy because we're going to be <coughs> using uh, in uh, photocopying records, uh, copying records, and uh, sorry, electron making our records electronic where possible and just overall implementation of the policy. I've been doing some research on how counties take minutes, and uh, a lot of them take action minutes. Uh, you know, I don't really want to go that far. I think the level of minutes we're taking now explains what, who said what and when, and, um, but we don't want it in the minutes is to interpret what people say, and that's a real issue. A lot of counties, including this one, have these software programs where they have multiple departments uh, putting items on the board agenda. Well, here there's only one one person that does, and that's me in the fight. Or I talk to the chair, and we put an item on the agenda, so there's no need for that. Um, and, what, and so the policy is is that we keep electronic copies of the minutes until we approve the uh, agenda. Although I I do I do like to have recordings of the minutes, and I try to keep them longer than just 60 days or whatever it is. Uh, because I do get requests or I go back. But, uh, and I think that's what the Board of Supervisors is doing now. There's minutes you can go to, the, you can't, uh, at least I couldn't, wasn't successful in getting any minutes, but I could get recordings. Uh, so, you uh, uh, all lot of recordings. So, anyway, this complies with the, the statute in the LAFCO code about uh, uh, records is that we can't make these records so that you can electronic copies so that they can be manipulated. So that's a, that's a, an issue uh, that we have to deal with. So it would be nice to have them all scanned and converted into Word, but then again, they could be manipulated down the road. It's not acceptable. So anyway, we're about ready to em embark on this process of trying to reduce the number of file boxes that we have. And also, at the same time, make them more accessible to the public somehow. Uh, so um, anyway, that's uh, that's the uh, that's my, my review of this. If you have any comments on it, okay. any questions or comments? Yes. Um, after they're electronically scanned, does the system create an index? So that they can be looked up. Oh, they have to be indexed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And we're developing a protocol to uh, to to have that uh, that index uh, a portion of this. So. Anyone from the public? I have a quick question. Yes. Is that uh, a 7,500 that would be adequate to do this chip? Uh, it, it, it may or may not. It depends. It may fall into next year. I, I don't know. I don't know what it would cost, and I want to keep the number a little low initially. So, because um, uh, I know one thing that we need to get is a good quality scanner uh, to, to do these. And I know that those are about $1,500 because we bought one from Yuba Lafco which I would definitely want a pirate throw a few bucks their way. <laughs> if we could use the same scanner, that would be great. You know? uh, whatever makes sense, you know, to save some money, because normally what I've been doing for the last 
five or six years of scanning everything. I have everything scanned, agendas, agenda packets, um, and uh, resolutions. It's it's just so much easier to manage electronically than it is. I mean, it's easy to email out to people too. Yes, and I get requests for records all the time, and it's not doesn't have to be real formal. It doesn't have to cost anybody any money. I just send them the electronic file. If there's copying involved, that's a different story. Well, it's just if you had any input on the records policy, that would be the only thing I would do. I think it's about time. So that's good news. Uh, report regarding the Calasco Annual Staff Workshop. All righty. Uh, that workshop, um, what it was, is um, it, it was in Los Angeles. And what I did was, one of the things that got me going on this is I did attend a session on electronic uh, filing in what the counties, uh, uh, Riverside County, for example, uh, in San Bernardino, what they're doing. And of course, some of these people are, are counties are spending a lot of money. And you know that, and the reason they are is they they have a lot more records than we have in Lake County. So that was uh, one of the um, items that I, I attended. There was a legislative session, and it's always kind of fun to attend the legislative legislative sessions, but everything's changed now. So it wouldn't be any, it wouldn't do, I, I'll ask Scott to talk about uh, some legislation in a, in a little bit here. Um, there was a session on a Brown Act, and, and you always need to be aware of what's going on. And, um, uh, there was a session on the legislative process, because it is quite a convoluted process. <coughs> And there was some, like they have professional development sessions of these things that were a little bit. And I know that Kathy uh, wants I actually to brought something on that from one of the, the uh, sessions that I attended on um, Senate Bill 272, which is amending the Public Records um, Act. And it's going to require, it's not going to impact us too much. And it, it, went into effect January of 2016. I have copies here if anybody is interested in seeing what the law says, but um, we have to comply with this by July the 1st, which we're not gonna have a problem doing, but you're required to every agency list the type of software that they are using to uh, compile their records. And if it involves, um, there's, certain things that for us all we're using basically is word and access and and so we don't even we don't have access we're not I, using that yet well i'm yeah i mean i'm using it but not to keep track of people's names but to organize uh, lists oh, and things yeah. like that but they're talking about p private data or personal data for people they if, the new law says that any agency and every agency has to list on their website the types of software that they're using to have um, to use this kind of data. So we don't have any, but we also um, at that conference uh, you could sign up if you. There's a company called Streamline that was doing a presentation there, and they have a free online tool which we I've already signed up for under Lake County Labco that will for free, show me how to put that together and put it on our website so we will be in compliance by July 1st. So I just wanted What's to let you know that. I have copies of the law that explains it a lot better than I just did. What was the purpose? Uh, because it's more, it to, to be more transparent, it's in the, the vein of transparency to show uh, the public if they want to know is for any LAPCO or any other agency, what records do they keep, what software do they keep, what types of things are they doing with, with this. And um, so it basically, I'll just. I think it's so that, because like I've gotten years ago, I used to get county and try to get stuff from the county and mm -hmm. put it on a CD and I could This is just, it's just one page. So you could, so I think it's one page. 
Yeah, your point is yeah. exactly right. Yeah. The point of it is is so that, for example, if they keep all their documents in as Adobe PDFs, you know that, that they will give them to you in that format, and you better be, have the software to. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, what we'll have on ours is basically Word and not very much, but it's a template that will allow us to be in compliance should anyone look. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Great. You know that it's under control. Thank you. And turn your phone off, please. I know, that's right. <laughs> um, anything else from the workshop, John? Um, the legislation, let's talk about that. Uh, the letter, there was a letter that we sent out regarding the city of Patterson versus Turlock Irrigation District. And apparently that's gained some traction and Scott was there, so I'm going to let Scott talk about that. Yeah. Um, we, uh, I was at the last Ledge Committee meeting. We, we uh, um, you know, I presented to the CalAFCO board based on your letter and those from a number of other LAFCOs that kindly wrote letters. And of course, Pamela, uh, through uh, John Leopold, the chair, uh, expressed concern about their ability to, to sponsor new legislation. And so it kind of went round on the issue. And we had a, a number of uh, 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 members of the Ledge Committee speaking out, supporting my position that it's very important to get this uh, section changed to get rid of this uh, ruling. Um, and then one uh, uh, one member of the committee came up with a, an interesting idea. She kind of got, threw it off end because we'd just been discussing SB uh, 1318, the Wolf Bill, which it has a lot of problems. It's a bill basically to Senator Wolf is leaving office next year. She did the, the disadvantaged unincorporated community bill, like 13, or 344, several years before. It's kind of her baby. And she's been very disappointed that many LAFCOs have not really implemented it. So 1318 is kind of an attempt to force LAFCOs to implement the DOT legislation by saying, the way it was originally written, that you have that LAFCO has to identify all the ducks in the county by a certain date. If it and if it doesn't, then it can't allow any annexations to move forward for any agency that could provide services. I mean, it's kind of a, a meat axe approach, saying you will do this. You shall. <laughs> right. And, uh, um, and so we've been working with Duran. I mean, part of the explanation is, I mean, yes, there are a number of LAFCOs out there. Not every LAFCO has as, as competent an executive officer as you do. And I can tell you, particularly to the north of you, there are lots of LAFCOs that have completely ignored the fact. Um, and, uh, um, but the point of it is, is that, okay, fine, you identify a, a disadvantaged community, but if there's no money to provide infrastructure to that community, what good is identifying it and saying you, you've got to annex it? Fine, you annex, you annex it to the city of Clear Lake, which doesn't have any money to provide any more services. So it remains in exactly the same condition. Annexation is not the magic bullet. And uh, we've been trying to explain that to her. And actually, we've gotten through on that. Well, it would be in conflict with the other LAFCO laws that say you have to make findings that the, that the entity has the ability to serve. The capacity exactly. to serve. The annex has the ability to serve. I know, I know. This is, we have been pointing these, you got to, the, the complete, a lack of awareness of what the, what the rules are is just uh, amazing when you deal with the with these uh, uh, legislators and their uh, consultants. They just do not understand what's happening on the ground or what the legal context they're working in is. We have a thought of here's a disadvantaged area. We want to make sure they get services, but the reality is that the services aren't there to be able to be provided. They're not getting that. That's not going to help by annexing it into the. Right, because they, they just automatically assume, well, I mean, you know, this this city must be as rich as L.A. or San Francisco, and what is, you know, surely it can extend the sewer to this little community. Well, 
That may be true for LA or San Francisco, but for smaller cities, that is a can be an insuperable financial obstacle. And uh, they just these people are so urban centric, they don't recognize how it applies outside of the urban areas. But we have to say that we've made this point to her and her staff has been willing to work with us on it. And therefore, because we have this relationship, it was suggested on the Patterson issue that that is an actual impediment to, to the um, annexation of these properties. Because if we if some of them some of them may already be getting services. And if if you want if you want to extend services to them so that they get clean water now and then annex them later. The Patterson case says you can't do that. So we've been pointing that out to her, that this is a problem. So the suggestion was made and the Ledge Committee adopted it to ask her to include a fix for the Patterson case in her bill. And so we think there's a real possibility that that might be included. But even though her bill was a bad bill, we think it's coming around to something we could actually support. Also because we know, I mean, she, she is a very influential senator. This is her last year. The, the legislature is going to pass whatever she asked them to pass. And so this is going to pass. So why not get what it's we need in the bill? Great idea. Isn't that a shame that we know that it's going to pass? That's really kind of against all my political thoughts of how a vote should go. <laughs> in in, in the local mean, government, I mean, even yeah, the Republicans, I mean, in, in, when, when in its original form, it was opposed by CSAC, it was opposed by Lake City, it was opposed by CSDA, you name it, every every group, Aqua opposed it. It didn't matter. It, 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 it was approved. There was only one dissenting vote. Even the Republicans voted in favor of it at the local government committee. Why? Because they don't view LAFCO as important, and Senator Wolf wants to Fiddle with Lafco, fine. Good. You know. So, so at any rate, that's kind of where it's going. We're hoping that we can take a uh, a, a, a sow's ear and turn it into a silk purse. We'll see. Okay. Any questions? Anyone from the public? You asked me last time to send a letter to Jim McDowell. Well, I didn't send a letter. I called him instead. I thought that would be much better. And he says, hi to all of you. He expressed frustration in, of trying to rebuild in the county. And as a result of the bureaucracy he was confronted, he decided not to rebuild. Um, and, you know, so that's the message. And then uh, uh, the other thing is out. he's between Oregon and um, so that you know, and his wife still has a place in Kelsey, so he, he may be back at some point. So anyway, he does say all of the best wishes. Uh, the next item I have is a special district report, and that's, I've uh, received some hot letters back, but not enough. I need to receive more about who, um, who they're voting for, and we've got four people that are uh, for it, and we see regulars in all. So we'll see how that goes. There's another week or so on the uh, ballot. Um, we, the RCD, we held our protest hearing, and there's a few uh, keys that we have to cross and I's we have to dot before uh, we finalize that. Any idea when that would be? Oh, I've got to talk to Victoria or Greg Dills. And then we'll, we'll get it done very soon. Anything else, John? Uh, no. Okay. Commissioner reports? Anyone have anything? Mr. Biden lost. Hold the button. Did you? Did you miss the Biden lost? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're proposed bylaw amendment. Oh, can we skip and, ahead? Thank you. Yeah. Well, normally, this this bylaw amendment, this is a type of thing that we introduce at one meeting and, and, and then adopt it in another, uh, is uh, I've drafted up the resolution here for that, which we'll put on the next agenda. And this is a legislative participation process. 
that we're able to um, respond quickly to bills. Because I get this request for signature, request for a letter to go out, and there's like three days you got to do yeah. it. And so the idea is we contact the chair and council, and um, and then distribute it after they buy off on it, and we email it out to the commissioners and put it on the next commission agenda. And that's essentially the policy. That way we can become active in participating in legislation rather than us just sending a letter out without the commission. Just send it out because staff feels like it should be sent out. It's got to be a little more than that. I think our last item that we discussed shows how important it is that we do get involved in the legislative process. Because otherwise we're going to end up having to deal with these laws that don't make sense. And have the ability to move quickly. I have one thing. Number two has include twice. Um, uh, you might want to catch that before you bring it back. Yeah, we may see. Uh, my answer might add to include to include a policy to. Yeah. Number two to include. To include. <laughs> okay. So this is an introduction, or are we going to see this at the next meeting? We'll see it at the next meeting for adoption. Okay, any questions on that? Anyone from the public? Okay, now Commissioner reports. Anyone have anything? Okay, correspondence. <coughs> Do we have any letters? Uh, none to report. Okay, before we adjourn, I should have noted at the beginning of the meeting that Commissioner Comstock joined us at the beginning. Uh, she had, got he it. had uncooperative cows that were a little late. <laughs> <laughs> they had to be convinced. <laughs> well, we're glad you made it. Uh, let's see, when's our next meeting? Wednesday, Wednesday July 20th, in Lakeport. We'll see you then. Meeting adjourned.